that we think about Boeing. Um, one of the courses that I teach on round about this time of year, actually, um, the Easter early music course in Monmouth, we have been known to do bow aerobics at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Ridiculous behaviour. And um, after breakfast, I might add, but before the first teaching session of the morning has started. Um, largely because I think most string players, viol players definitely, we spend way too much time thinking about this hand, left hand, and not enough time thinking about this. Um, and when you actually think about the responsibility of those two hands, what this hand gives us is pitch. Are you playing the right note or the wrong note? But what this hand gives us is absolutely everything else. What do those notes sound like? Are you making a nice sound or a revolting sound? Um, are, you, are you playing loud or are you playing quietly? Does that note start with any particular kind of articulation? What sort of shape does it have in the middle? How does it finish? All of that comes from this hand. Um, and yeah, I would suggest that we have maybe 90% of our brain on this um, and only 10% left for this funny old stick in our right hand. Um, and I think we should be the other way round. So I plan to try and encourage people to think a little bit more about what they're doing with, with their bow. Um, right from the very, very, very beginning then, first things first, how do we hold our bow? Continue how I hold my bow. So if I'm starting somebody out who's a new player, get them to shake hands with somebody who's sitting opposite them. And then the hair of the bow rests on this joint at the bottom of your first finger where it joins the palm of your hand. The stick rests on your first finger. Your next finger comes through the gap between the hair and the wood and just the top joint of it hooks over the hair so that you can pull it. And that's basically your dynamic control, more pressure or less pressure. And as a starting point, that's it. So there's two points of contact, one at the base of your first finger and one on this middle finger here. Your first finger is not really doing anything. And for now, I wonder whether we might not have our thumb on the stick and these two fingers not doing anything either. What kind of sound would we get if we just relied on those two points of contact. We're going to let the wood just tilt, angle, relaxed, nice towards, towards the floor, towards the bridge. We're playing on the side of the hair. What kind of sound do we get? like that every day for the rest of your vinyl playing career that would not be such a bad thing would it so I've got a challenge for you can we play we're going to start on the c string and um, tenor players if you want to do the same thing i'm starting on the fourth string down the c string i don't mind if we play in parallel fourths so your fourth string would be your f string and then you'll be doing the same thing as me and um, starting at the tip of the bow we're going to play the fourth string four times and then move up to the E string and play that four times and the next string and the top string and then come all the way back playing each one four times over using most of our bow definitely getting right to the tip but the challenge is do you need your thumb and do you need these two fingers here nice and steady we'll try one two three four one
the top. So if your vial is sitting too low, or if it's too flat, not angled enough, or if it's over to one side, or if your bow is at a wonky angle, then you will bow into your knee. It's much easier to sort out where the vial is than it is to drill a hole through your knee. So just sort this out so that you can get comfortably round that top string and not bow into your knees. What about keeping parallel to the bridge? Because that's the best sound, isn't it? When the bow is parallel to the bridge. So if you think about the frog drawing an arc out here, completely parallel to this bit, and each of your strings is on a different point around that arc, you're moving forward to get to the top string. You're not coming up because it's higher. You're going forwards and backwards. So this is completely relaxed, hanging off here. Your elbow never comes out like this. We would never have our shoulders up here, would we? Even if we were thinking very hard about what notes we were playing and trying to read the music really carefully. We would never do such a thing. Very relaxed in the vial department. So let's do that again with a really great awareness of this finger on the hair, this arm just hanging off the bow, and this drawing its semicircle parallel to the bridge. Starting on the fourth string. Three, four, one. of sound with just these two points of contact on the bow and your thumb not doing anything and your first finger not doing anything. If your normal bow hold has got all sorts of other things on it as well, and I'm not necessarily suggesting it shouldn't, I want to know why are they there and what are they doing? So particularly if you have lessons, please don't turn up at your next vial lesson and say, I've got a new bow hold. I don't need any of this other stuff. I'm just going to hold it with these, these two bits here. I'm going to have my thumb in the air and these two fingers completely out of the way and that's it, I've got it sorted. I just mean that if there are other things on your bow, they need to be there for a reason. So one of the problems we've got with this bow hold so far, really good sound, but if I want to play louder, fine, I can put more pressure on with this finger. I can take all the pressure off with that finger. But once I take it completely away, the bow is going to slip. So I will need some other things on the bow to help. But for making a really basic good sound, I would suggest that that is all you need. So maybe you could experiment for this week with just that on your bow and see what happens. <laughs> 